All right, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to do a primary source activity on the Declaration of Independence. And we are going to take a look at the document. We're going to read through it. We're going to analyze the different sections and trying to figure out what the purpose of it was, who it was directed at, and we'll see what we come up with. It looks like an app. Yeah, I know it's CIA. Where? Where? Is it certain? Wait, where? Next sentence. Which input them to the separation line. We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of the life. Do they mess up? No. This is, it's almost as if when they put these that it should be a separate paragraph. That's their... No, it's not that they messed up. Okay, <laughs> start filling out your, your activity sheet and in a few minutes we'll come back together as a group. Why did John Hancock sign it so big? <laughs> yeah, alright, got my question in there. Okay. Is the document easy to read? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> let's, let's start at the beginning and decide what we noticed about the document. Anything that you noticed about the document. Let's start over here with table three. What did we notice? That it was handwritten. Handwritten? And what else did you notice? There's lots of signatures and people. Okay, we got signatures. What else? There's lines on there? Lines. Lines between sentences or paragraphs, perhaps? Lines. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Pretty long sentences. Long sentences. Complicated words. What kind of words? Hard vocabulary. Hard vocabulary. Would the average colonist of this time perhaps have difficulty understanding what this document was about? Yes. Perhaps. One more, go. There's an error in here. Or they fixed it somewhere. There's a typo. They didn't have whiteout back in those days, so they actually had to cross something out and write over it. There's a typo. Like five inches above, like the space between John and What questions did you have? How long did it take to write the whole thing? Okay. How long? Why did John Hancock sign something? Yeah. What else? There's some like letters in there that are like capitalized like, and they're not at the beginning of the sentence or they're not like probably. So why are certain letters capitalized? At the very top of the document where it says in Congress July 4th 1776 below that it says the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of, of America and States of America is capitalized United is lowercase. Why? Why? Anyone know? It's a declaration of the United States of America. Why is United lowercase, everything else is uppercase? Yeah. It's not a country yet. It's not a country yet. This is not the declaration of the United States of America, the country, the nation. There is no United States of America. It's the declaration of 13 independent states that are uniting for one purpose. What do we know about the declaration? Sent to the king and to parliament. Talks about those certain, certain unalienable rights. Unalienable rights. What's an unalienable right? What's that mean? A right that cannot be taken away. Can't be taken away. Okay. And among these are what? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of heaven. Life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah. 
All having a direct object, the establishment of an absolute tyranny over the state. What rights are the writers? Wait, I know what it means. I know what it means. What time is Use for patience is unlawful power grabs. Tyranny. And what's the other word, Lauren? Um, what? What's the other word? Tyranny. Tyranny is unjust, unjust government. Okay. Okay, what rights are the writers claiming they have? Um, life, life, liberty, and pursuit Who wants to read this paragraph? Go ahead. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is some very famous language that I'm sure you heard before we saw it today. We hold these truths to be self-evident. These truths are obvious to everyone, that all men are created equal. Anybody troubled by that? All men are created equal. What the heck does that mean? Does it mean that everyone is born the same, everyone's as smart as everyone else, everyone is as strong as everyone else, everyone is as good looking as everyone else? What's it mean? We have equal rights. Anyone troubled by that? Well, why aren't we troubled by that? Who's writing this document? I guess you could call them white men, but the slaves didn't have any rights. Okay. And what about women? Did they have legal, equal legal rights with men back in those days? No. There were restrictions on ownership of property and things like that. Who's writing? Who's the primary author of this document again? Well, what do we know about Jefferson? He was a slave owner. Well, now, wait a minute. All men are created equal. We have a lot of contradictions with Thomas Jefferson. And the truth of the matter is, when we take a look at someone like Jefferson and all of those other great figures up on Mount Rushmore, you think of them as gods, as perfect human beings, and they weren't. They were flesh and blood. They were human. They had contradictions. Well, maybe, maybe he's thinking, well, he's trying to make them feel like they're, they have a say in their legislation, but they actually don't, and then they found out or something. Well, two, we know that the British troops in the colonies yeah. were put in houses. Put houses. And then the, the colonists had to provide for them, like, give them food and place to sleep. And, like, yeah. Right. And they had to pay, they had to pay for their food. And, and, you know, who wants some guy living with you? You don't even know who he is. Number one, he has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. And that means that the king decides how much the judges are getting paid? Okay, it, it has to do with their pay. He also chooses the judges, and if he doesn't like what the judges are doing, he can kick them out. He has abdicated government care by declaring that. What's the word abdicated mean? Abandoned. Abandoned, okay, he has abdicated government here. Go ahead. By declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. Okay. I mean, it means like he ignored them and like he was ignoring their laws that they passed. What do you think? Did the colonists have a point here? The sort of things that they are complaining about that are upsetting them, do you think that they had a point here or do you think they were being spoiled brats? Well, like right now, that would be considered unfair treatment. They were being treated unfairly by the king and the parliament. Okay. And does anyone have a different view? Anybody feel that the colonists were sort of <coughs> just, you know, whining? Yeah? You think they were just whining? No. The taxes in England were much higher than the ones in America. Okay. And the comment, going back to the comment about no taxation without representation, we know that uh, there were a lot, a lot of areas of, of England where the citizens of England were not directly represented in Parliament.